What's up guys? Today I'm bringing you part one of a series of mnemonics that I've either seen or created myself for the step one. And today we're talking about the reproductive system. Hope it helps. So some embryo genes that you should know about are the sonic hedgehog gene, which causes holoprosencephaly. And my trick is that sonic has a big head in proportion to his body. So I'm already thinking that the effect has to do with encephaly, encephalitis, something related to the head. Um, WNT7 is responsible for dorsal to ventral axis. And my trick is to think of wings and torso. Wings being the dorsal part and torso being the ventral part. Development of the embryo has many stages. Beginning at day six, we have formation of the blastocyst. And my trick is to think of blastos six. On week three, we have formation of the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. And my trick is to think of the three layers for week three. On week four, we have formation of the heart and limb buds. I want to clarify it's formation of the heart and not heartbeats, which happens on week six. The trick here would be that the heart has four chambers and we have four limbs, so that's week four. On week eight, we're worried about the effect of teratogens. So my trick is to think of teratogens, teratogens. For week 10, we have formation of the genitalia. So my trick is to think of tenitalia, tenitalia for week 10. Some teratogens that we worry about include tetracyclines, which cause discoloration of the teeth. And the trick for this is to think of tethocyclines for tetracyclines. Another one is thalidomide. And my trick here is to think of thalimbdomide because it causes deformities of the limbs. The lymphatic drainage of the gonads is fairly high yield, and bear in mind that some of these tricks are better than others. But for paraaortic lymph nodes, I think of para ovaries and testes, a pair of ovaries and testes. External iliac, I think of bladder extrophy. Internal iliac, which drains the prostate, makes me think of a digital rectal exam where the digit goes into the rectum. The superficial inguinal drains the scrotum, and my trick is to think that the scrotum is a superficial pouch that holds the testes. Deep inguinal drains the glands of the penis, and the trick I have is that the glands goes deep inside, so that's deep inguinal. Female anatomy contains three important ligaments. The first one is suspensory ligament which has to do with the ovaries and oophorectomies. My trick is to think that the ovaries are suspended, like two little grapes or two little cubes, right there suspended. The cardinal ligament has to do with the uterus and therefore hysterectomies. My trick is to think that the uterus is the central body, like the word cardinal. It's like this high rank thing where everything revolves around it. The uterus is the central body, it's in the center of the reproductive system. So the round ligament has to do with the inguinal canal. So my trick is to think that the inguinal canal is a round tube. Here's a picture of the ligaments we just talked about. And the reason I put this is because I've seen a question before where they'll label all the ligaments, A, B, C, D, and then they'll ask you which one of them goes to the inguinal canal. So I don't want you to get confused and pick suspensory ligament just because it go, it's going up, but rather take a look at where the round ligament actually is, because that is the one that goes to the round inguinal canal. For female histo, we have cuboidal cells which line the ovaries, and my trick is to think of two floating ice cubes. Those are the ovaries. Squamous cells are going to line the vagina and ectocervix. The trick for me is to remember that these are areas of friction during intercourse. Columnar cells are going to line the uterus, endocervix, and fallopian tubes, which is pretty much everything left inside except the ovaries, which are cuboidal. We have two steps of cell cycle arrest of oocytes. So we have got meiosis 1, which stops at prophase 1 until ovulation. My trick is to think of prophase as preface, pre-ovulation. Meiosis 2 stops at metaphase 2, 
until fertilization. My trick is to think of metaphase as beta phase because we already went to, through the pre-phase. Now we're in the beta tasting stage and we're waiting to see if it's good enough to become fertilized for the real thing. There are several placental issues that can happen before or after labor. So we have placental accreta, which is when it attaches to the endometrium. Usually they'll say something about um, the placenta being removed in pieces after labor rather than as a whole unit. And that is because it's attached. So placental increta, uh, to me, it goes into the endometrium. It enters the endometrium. And placental percreta is going to perforate into the serosa. And it actually sticks to the bladder and the bowels or rectum. The rest include mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma, for which a key word is pseudomyxoma peritoneae. So my trick is to think of pseudomucinoma peritoneae. I know it's a bit of a stretch. So raloxifene um, is given for breast cancer. My trick is to remember it as relaxifene because it doesn't cause endometrial cancer like tamoxifen. And lastly, finasteride. My trick is to think of the FI in finasteride for 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. And this one's used for benign prostatic hypertension. There's another one called flutamide that is used for actual prostate cancer. So remember, finasteride is the one that does 5-alpha reductase. So that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Study hard and have a great day. Bye.